Today, we're gonna to be doing the ultimate mortgage showdown to help you choose the best mortgage for your dream home by discussing the differences between FHA loans and conventional loans. We're gonna be talking about the pros and cons of each. We're also going to be doing some comparisons between the two. We're gonna go over scenarios using three, five, and 10% down on both FHA loans and conventional loans so that you can see exactly what the numbers look like, which will ultimately help you decide which mortgage is right for you. As we dive into the nitty gritty of these popular mortgage options and ultimately help you choose a winner, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button if you find any value in this video or any of the other videos I do, and feel free to subscribe to the channel to stay updated on everything real estate related. Now, when most people think FHA loans, they think first time home buyer, they think minimal down payment, they probably even think lower credit scores because that's more or less the rap that FHA has gotten over the last couple of years. As many people out there believe it's a loan option only for those that have the lower credit scores, those that have the lesser down payment. But in today's video, we're going to compare it to conventional financing, somebody with higher credit scores, someone with a larger down payment, and ultimately show you that FHA may not be as bad as you might think. Now, the very first thing I want to do in today's video is talk about down payment because typically that's what drives the consumer, most buyers to one loan program or another. They think because I have a minimal down payment, I have to use option A. And in this case, we're gonna be talking about FHA. So FHA has a minimal down payment of three and a half percent, which means if you're buying a hundred thousand dollar home, you're putting thirty five hundred dollars down just for the down payment. That's not including closing costs, and it's the same for two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand dollar loans. You're putting three and a half percent down payment. Now, one of the questions that often comes up with FHA is, can I put more money down? Can I put more than three and a half percent down? Can I put five percent down, ten percent down, twenty percent down? And the answer is yes. In fact, in today's video, we're going to be comparing some options, putting a little bit more money down on. FHA, comparing that to conventional so that you can see the difference in those payments. But for most people, putting more than 10% down, you're absolutely going to go with conventional financing in most cases, just because it's going to end up being a better loan, especially if you have higher credit scores. Now, if you have lower credit scores, you might still go towards the FHA loan. But when we talk about some of the other pros and cons of each, it might help you decide which loan program is right for you. Now, with that said, let's talk about conventional financing. Conventional financing has an option of 3% down. They also have options where you can put more than 3% down. Typically, when people think conventional financing, they think that they have to put 20% down to buy a house, and that's simply not true. You can get a conventional mortgage with as little as 3% down, but there are some stipulations. It has to be a standard balance loan. Standard balance at the moment is less than 726200 Now, for many of you watching this video across the country, you're going, Jeb, I'm not getting a mortgage anywhere close to that, so it ultimately doesn't matter. I'm going to be able to use that 3% option. Well, here in the state of California, where I'm located, many homes out there are above that price point at this point, so it makes it very difficult to use that 3% down option. But for those of you who are able to do that standard balance loan, then 3% is definitely an option, but also have to be a first-time home buyer, which means that you can't have owned a home in the last three years. And another option is you have to be home ready or home possible eligible, which means that that you make 80% or less of the area median income. Now here in Southern California, if you make 80% or less of the area median income, you're likely not buying a house to start, but other areas across the country might be able to qualify for that 3% down option. But with that said, you have other options with conventional as well. You can put 5%, 10%, 20% down. And we'll talk about the differences in putting more money down here in just a minute as we start talking about the mortgage insurance requirement. But before we dive into that, I want to talk a little bit about credit scores. And the main reason I want to talk about credit scores early is because credit scores is really one of the things that can push you towards FHA over conventional financing. As many of you are already aware, FHA allows credit scores as low as 500. Now, if you have between a 500 and a 579 credit score, you have have to put at least 10% down using an FHA loan. If you have a 580 or higher, you can do as little as a 3.5% down payment. Now, one thing I want to be very clear on in this video 
is just because you have the 3.5% down and you have a 580 credit score doesn't mean you're going to qualify for an FHA loan. In fact, with lower credit scores, it's going to be more difficult to qualify for an FHA loan. It's also going to be more difficult to qualify for a conventional loan, which has a little higher credit score requirement, but it's just something to keep in mind. Just understand, because you meet the basic eligibility requirements for FHA and or conventional doesn't mean you're going to qualify for that loan. It just means that you've met the standard requirement, if you will, and that your loan has to go to an underwriter to actually get approved. So when you have lower credit scores, you have a lower down payment, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to qualify. And with that said, you want to make sure you're working with a professional when going through this process. If you don't have one, I put a link in the description below where you can talk to a mortgage professional that I know, like, and trust that can guide you through that process. But remember, the higher your credit scores, the more likely you are to get approved and the better the terms of the loan are going to be. So we talked about FHA allowing credit scores as low as 580. Well, conventional financing allows credit scores as low as a 620, but you're not likely to get that automated approval. It's going to require a manual underwrite when you have lower credit scores and a lower down payment, which means it's going to be harder to qualify. So just something to keep in mind when you're watching videos like this and you're comparing the two loan programs. In fact, if you have lower than a 680, 80 credit score at the moment, you're likely going to be going FHA just because the rates are considerably higher for conventional financing if your credit score is below 680. With all the loan level price adjustments that are now being added, it's almost a no brainer to go FHA if your credit score is below 680. And also, if your credit score is below 680, you're not going to qualify for the 3% down option either. It requires at least a 680 credit score. So if you have below 680, you're almost pushed automatically into FHA for that minimal down payment option. But if you have a little bit more money to put down, we're going to take a look at what those numbers look like here in just a minute. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is mortgage insurance. This is one of those things that comes up that people say, I absolutely don't want you know an FHA loan because of the mortgage insurance. I have to go conventional financing. So we're going to talk about the differences, if you will, between FHA and conventional. And then in just a minute, we're going to show you comparison on paper between FHA and conventional exactly what that mortgage insurance looks like so that hopefully it can give you a better idea by comparing the two options. So with FHA, mortgage insurance is always required regardless of the LTV. So if you put 3% down, 5% down, 10% down, 20% down, you're going to have mortgage insurance. Now, the more money you put down, the less your mortgage insurance is going to be, but it is going to be required. It's going to be required monthly, and it's also going to be required upfront. And if you put less than 10% down, it's going to be on the loan for the life of the loan, which means even if you get 20% equity in that property, you're still going to have mortgage insurance on that property. But here's the key. If you put at least 10% down on FHA, the mortgage insurance falls off after a year. 11. But here's the thing. If you have an FHA loan and you get 20% equity in the property, you can just refinance and get into a conventional loan if you want and remove that mortgage insurance. So a lot of people shy away from FHA because they don't want mortgage insurance and want to think that they can save 20% down and wait until they do to buy a home. Well, during that time, you might be missing the market. Prices might continue to go up. In fact, I had a client that bought during 2021 that put 3.5% down, that got an FHA loan, was fortunate enough to, to find a home and, and get into the process. And within a year, they actually had 20% equity in that property because the market went up so much. Now, that's not normal, and I'm not saying that's going to happen to you, but had they waited until they got a 20% down payment, they probably would have never purchased a home. And this isn't a push to get you to buy a home. It's just pointing out that it's not always best to wait and that sometimes FHA might be the best option. It might be the only option for you. And another thing to mention with FHA mortgage insurance is that everyone pays the same rate regardless of credit score. Whereas with conventional financing, it's going to vary based on down payment, based on credit score, based on the number of borrowers that you have on the loan, in addition to your DTI, in addition to the property type. So there are a lot of different factors that affect the amount that you're going to pay on mortgage insurance, whereas FHA, 
it's pretty straightforward. But as you put more money down, the coverage requirement is going to be less, which means you're going to pay less with conventional financing. Another pro about conventional financing is there is no upfront mortgage insurance. As I mentioned earlier with FHA, you pay a monthly amount and you also pay an upfront amount. So with FHA, when you're putting 3.5% down, you're not really putting 3.5% down. You're putting about half of that down because you're having to finance the additional 1.75% with regards to the upfront funding fee, whereas conventional loans, you don't have that fee. And another pro on the conventional side is that mortgage insurance can be removed after meeting certain criteria, like 20% equity in the property, you know, you don't have to necessarily refinance out of that loan. Once you have 22% equity in your property, the mortgage insurance will fall off automatically. But once you have 20% equity in your property, you can, in theory, contact your lender, have them do an appraisal. And as long as the appraisal shows that you have the equity, they will essentially remove that mortgage insurance without you having to refinance. So if you have a super low rate, and you don't want to lose it with say conventional financing, then that can be a really good way to keep the rate. Versus if you have an FHA loan and you get that 20% equity, you essentially have to refinance out of that property. So if you had a super low rate, you might end up losing that rate if you wanted to take advantage of removing that mortgage insurance. So you have to weigh which option is best for you, but we're going to be talking about that here in just a minute as we compare the two different options. Now, before we talk about the pros and cons of loan limits with FHA and conventional, I wanna mention a first time home buyer course that I created to help guide home buyers through the process. If you're someone just starting the process, not sure where to start, I created this course from A to Z to walk you through it, to become an expert, if you will. So if you're looking to become an expert home buyer and wanna know where to start, do me a favor and check out Becoming Homewise, which is linked below. Now, with that said, I wanna talk about the differences on loan limits with FHA and conventional. FHA FHA loan limits can actually be a con depending on where you live in the country, as they can be lower than the conventional loan requirement. Conventional loans allow you a standard balance loan up to $726,200, whereas some areas of the country, if you're doing FHA, your max loan amount is $472,030. As it varies by state, it varies by county. So if you need to know the max loan amount where you're located, I put a link in the description below that you can go check to figure out where the loan limits are. But depending on where you are in the country, the loan limit can be a pro or a con, or it might not really matter to you depending on how much home you're trying to purchase. Now in high cost states like here in California, the FHA has very similar loan limits to conventional financing. So if you're in a high cost area, it's not really a problem, but conventional financing also has a similar guideline that allows for high balance loans up to just over a million dollars at the present time, which is essentially 150% of the standard balance. That's 726,200. But some examples for you, like here in the state of California, Fresno, if you will, has an FHA loan limit of 472,000, whereas conventional financing allows you to go up to 726,200. So if you're in Fresno and you're looking to do an FHA loan, you're limited on how much home you can purchase based on that guideline. Whereas here in Orange County, LA County, you can go up to 1,089,300 for both FHA and conventional loans. So depending on where you are in the country, that might be a pro, it might be a con, it might not matter at all, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. And the last thing I wanna discuss before looking at the numbers are the property requirements, FHA, has an appraiser go out to do a visual inspection of the property just to make sure there's no health and safety issues on that property, peeling paint, that sort of thing. Those have to be addressed with FHA, whereas conventional financing more or less just points any health and safety issues out. It's not really something that usually comes up as a concern. So if you're trying to buy a house that needs a lot of work, then FHA financing could be an issue on that case, whereas conventional financing might not have an issue at all. Now the moment you've all been waiting for. We're gonna be talking about the differences in FHA versus conventional. We're going to be doing a 3% down with conventional, a 5% and a 10% down. And then on FHA, we're gonna be talking about 3.5% down versus 5 and 10%. Now with FHA, we're just going to assume it's a single family home, you have a 660 credit score. So not a great credit score, not super low, but a 660. You could even say a 640. The terms aren't really gonna change that much. And with the conventional financing, we're going to assume that you have a 740 credit score and that you have at least two borrowers on the loan and your debt to income ratio is not above 40%. Now you're probably going, Jeb, why does all that matter? Because all of those things affect 
the mortgage insurance rate. If you have a lower credit score or a higher DTI, you're going to end up paying more on the mortgage insurance. I'm trying to get comparable loans here, so I'm using a higher credit score of 740, and we're using two borrowers. If you only had one borrower, the mortgage insurance is also going to be higher. Whereas with FHA, Again, we're talking about a 640 or a 660 credit score. It doesn't matter how many borrowers, doesn't matter your debt to income ratio. We're talking the same rate across the board for all of those. But with that, we're going to be doing a $500,000 purchase price. So with option one, we're gonna be saying 3% down versus 3.5% down, which is the better option. Well, with FHA, if you're putting 3.5% down, you're going to end up financing $490,944 because you're going to put the 3.5% down, but you're going to have the 1.75% mortgage insurance, the upfront mortgage insurance added back to the loan, which means you're financing $400,000 and $90,944. The interest rate with FHA today is going to be six and a quarter percent, which means that your mortgage payment is going to be $3,022. Now for property taxes, we're going to be using one and a quarter percent. Across the nation, 1.1 seems to be the average. Here in the state of California, it's around 1.1, but a lot of lenders locally use one and a quarter. For, so for the calculations today, we're gonna to be using one and a quarter percent. So if you're in a high cost state like Texas, Florida, probably gonna be paying more in mortgage insurance. Here in the state of California, you know, this is pretty normal. But with that said, a $500,000 purchase price is going to give you property taxes of $520 per month. On top of that, you're going to have property insurance. We're estimating $125 in addition to the mortgage insurance that's required, the monthly mortgage insurance at 0.55%, which is $225. So all in, $500,000 purchase, putting 3.5% down, your mortgage payment is going to be $3,893. Now let's compare that to the conventional loan. Again, the conventional loan had higher credit scores, had a little bit less money down, 3% down. So in this case, you're financing 485,000 because there's not upfront mortgage insurance. So you have a little bit more equity in the property, but your interest rate is going to be higher. Your interest rate on conventional financing today is sitting at 6.875% for this 3% option, which means your mortgage payment is going to be $3,186. Your property taxes are going to be the same at 520. Your property insurance is going to be the same at 125. And your mortgage insurance is going to be a little bit less because based on the scenario we mentioned earlier, it's going to be 0.52%, which means your mortgage insurance is $210 per month, which gives you a total monthly mortgage payment of $4,042, which is essentially $149 a month higher than the FHA loan. So you put a little bit less money down, you had higher credit scores, but your payment is going to be $149 higher. So in this case, FHA looks like the better option because you're saving nearly $150 per month. Now with the 5% down option, I'm not gonna run through all the detailed numbers again. The calculations are essentially the same, but on a 5% down option with FHA, you're financing $483,313. Your interest rate is going to be the same at six and a quarter percent. So your monthly mortgage payment is $2,975. The property taxes are the same. The monthly property insurance is the same. Your mortgage insurance is going to be a little bit less at $221, making your total monthly payment $3,843. And on the conventional side, putting 5% down, you're actually financing $475,000. So you're financing a little bit less. The interest rate improves slightly from the 3% option. So your interest rate is going to be 6.75%, giving you a mortgage payment of $3,080 and a total mortgage payment of $3,865, which in this case is about $22 higher than the FHA options. So you're still paying a little bit more money using the conventional option versus the FHA option in this case. And lastly, with the 10% option, your payment is going to be $3,674 using the FHA loan and $3,650 using the conventional loan. The interest rates are essentially the same in both of those as they were in the 5% options. So in the 10% option, it looks like your payment is about $24 or so better using the conventional loan versus FHA loan. But again, and remember, you had to have above a 740 credit score to get the terms here. Whereas FHA, we were talking about a 640 to 660 credit score. So if you have the lower credit scores, you're going to be pushed almost towards an FHA loan versus the conventional loan. Now with all of that said, I don't want you to watch this video and decide I'm an FHA borrower or I'm a conventional borrower. What you need to do is talk to a mortgage professional, have them run an FHA loan option, have them run a conventional loan option. If you're putting you know, different down payment 
requirements. If you have an option to put different down payments down, have them do those on paper, compare the two like we did a little bit here, look at the numbers and decide which loan program is right for you. Don't just try to figure it out on your own. Use a mortgage professional to do that. Now, if you don't have one, as I mentioned earlier, there's a link in the description to talk to somebody that I know, like, and trust that can guide you through that process. But if you're still watching this video, not sure about FHA, not sure about conventional, I put both videos right here going over all the loan requirements that you need to know. So do me a favor and check those out to help you decide which loan program is right for you.